guys, it's Julia and welcome back to my channel and for today's video I'm going to be doing my November wrap-up talking about the books that I read in the month of November. And I die if you want to destroy my sweater. first book that I read this month was The Child Finder by Renee Denfeld. This is a mystery kind of suspense novel and it's about this woman named Naomi who finds these children that have gone missing and it's her job. She thinks it's her destiny. It's what she does and she is trying to find this girl named Madison that went missing a while ago and it's really interesting and atmospheric. Sorry I'm, I've never sat on like a spinny chair to film before. I usually sit on my bed but since the shelves are new I'm on a spinny chair. Yay. But so sorry if I'm moving. But this book was really interesting. It's very atmospheric. If you're looking for that, I'd definitely suggest it. Her writing is absolutely stunning. I'm not surprised. I read The Enchanted by her and it was really good as well. The only thing that lacked for me is it's not like an on the edge of your seat kind of read. It's just beautifully a beautifully told tale. It kind of has a fairy tale-esque side to it as well, like a dark fairy tale. It's definitely very wintry, so it's perfect for this time of year. The only thing that the only things that I wasn't a fan of was um, well, one, the animal, well, trigger warnings for animal cruelty and pedophilia as well in this book. But I wasn't a big fan of the romance. And then the only other thing that lacked for me was, again, I wasn't too invested, but it was really beautifully told. And I give it a lot of credit. And I will definitely be picking up whatever else Renee Denfeld writes in the future. So I gave this 3.5 out of 5 stars. Enchanted by Kara Beatrice. This is a poetry collection. Do 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 do. So this is a poetry collection about all sorts of things, mostly about love and what you, poetry is usually all about. I was sent in exchange for an honest review and unfortunately I didn't enjoy it very much. I found a lot of the poems very cliche and repetitive of one another. They're definitely things that I've read before. They're basic kind of poetry lines, basic analogies that I've seen before and heard before. And I also just thought they were really short, like too short, and it just didn't work for me. So I ended up giving this a two star, two star rating. There was a few poems that I liked, but I gave it two stars. So next up here, I read 10 Count Volume 1. This is by Rihiro Takaria. I tried. So this is a manga series that is a male male romance and it's about, about a guy who has obsessive compulsive disorder and one day he is approached by this nice looking man and of course this man's a psychologist and he says, hey I see you're wearing gloves, um, you probably are a hand washer and you probably have OCD so you should come to my office and the guy goes, okay. And then they start seeing each other for sessions and he gives him a list of 10 things to do to cure his OCD that's not how it works. So that bothered me. It's horrible representation for OCD. I think it's a bad image to put in people's heads that you 10 steps, you're done, and then you're gonna be with this hot man. It's like, that's not how it works. I only give this two stars because it wasn't that bad. Like the art style was kind of okay. I'm probably gonna boost this down to like a one or a 1.5 stars. I was really not impressed with this one, unfortunately, and I will not be picking up the rest. Yeah, so as you can see, the reading, my reading must start off pretty rocky. Um, so next up I picked up Without Merit by Colleen Hoover. This definitely did not help that streak at all. Well it, well it did help the streak of bad reads but anyways this book is about a girl named Merit and she has a very complicated family life. She lives in a church. She, Her actual mom who lives downstairs and her siblings and basically she is in an antique store and she likes to buy trophies for herself which at first I was like okay fun and then this nice man is just eyeing her and she's like huh that guy's pretty hot i'll just let him stare me down like a hawk so then he follows her and she's just like yes and they start making out on the corner but oh oh no Merritt has a twin sister wasn't supposed to be her and she's shook <laughs> well she knows she has a sister but she thought this guy was there for her you know basically i hated this book i think there's a lot of trigger warnings for this book i think this is really gonna get a lot of dislikes. Um, there's a lot, there's a lot of trigger warnings for this book, and a lot of people are hating it right now. Which honestly, I don't get why someone would give this five stars. Other than that, it's a fast read. Like usually, I can kind of see why people would like it, but this is so creepy to the point where no. And I personally can't explain the representation for this, but apparent it's getting called homophobic, which literally the twist in it is so inappropriate and does not make sense at all 
that it's really offending a lot of people and also the all the things that happened with Merritt again weren't done dealt with right and then there's this other guy in the book I wrote a whole like ranty Goodreads review if you want to check it out but I didn't like it I wouldn't recommend it but if you liked it you do you yeah. and if you did give this book five stars explain to me why in the comments because I don't know why you give it five stars but you do you I don't know next up here I have The Virgin Suicides by Jeffrey Eugenides and of course um I was having a very bad spree of reads um other than The Child Finder which was pretty good but the other three no so I decided let's pick up a book I know I'll love so this is my fifth or sixth fourth fifth I don't know reread of this book basically if you don't know I talk about it all the time but it's about the five Lisbon daughters who all commit suicide and it's about these boys who live across from who live across the street from them and they kind of are very fascinated with them and what happened to them in their lives and that's what this story is about and it's amazing I love it five stars I don't say that often but five stars <laughs> I wouldn't have reread it this many times if I didn't like it. Definitely, I've had better times rereading it than this time, just because, like, I w wish I read it with my annotations. Because I'm like, no, I want to read like a new book, like, a, like, a, like one with no notes. But then I was like, I wanted to read my notes too, because I drew pictures in there, and it's just fun. But I love it. I love it. If you haven't read this yet, please do. Here I have Murder on the Orient Express by Agatha Christie. This I talked about. A ton already on my channel I did a whole book review for it so I'll link that up on the screen and in the description box and at the end of the video you know the drill this is about a man who gets murdered on the Orient Express and the detective on this train has to figure out who it is who did it that sort of story so there's interviews with all the people it's very organized this butch book which was something I liked about it the only thing is that the only reason why I only gave this three stars was because it was good don't get me wrong it was good. I do like Agatha Christie's writing, but like you're there, like I'm there for the mystery. Like if I catch it early or if it doesn't impress, not well that sounds kind of cocky, but if it's not like an amazing reveal then it lacks for me. Like it's one of those books where like the last 50 pages really decides my rating kind of thing because it's written like good but it's simple. But like you're there because of the mystery, because of the suspense, you're waiting for this reveal. And though it was shocking, I liked and then there were not a lot more, weirdly enough. So I gave this one three stars. It was still good. I would suggest it for a Christie novel. It was really interesting. And check out my review if you want to know more. But I definitely prefer then there were none. Then I decided to finish off one of my new favorite series, which is a manga series, and that is Dead Man Wonderland. So I finished volumes 13, this is not 13, 11, 12, and 13. So I read these three and these are so good. I love this series. Basically it's about a boy named Ganta who gets accused of killing his whole class and because he's the only one there he's the only one who lives and his whole class gets assassinated and they send him to the dead man wonderland prison which is very like a carnival amusement park type of prison they the prisoners do like they make the prisoners play these games that are like life to death kind of games and it's about him and the people he meets in there and stuff like that but these are this is the last volume 13 so I liked it. I gave four stars four stars and then like I think a five or a 4.5 the series so good so good so good to be i have a book that i actually ended up dnfing so for that i have a lethal marriage and this is by nick prone this is the a true crime book about a true crime book about paul bernardo and carla hamolka this is a really twisted case that a canadian case and it involves a spree of rapes and murders in like the tr not toronto ish but like it's around Toronto just for people who don't know Ontario very well but I had to DNF it honestly it literally says on the back this book did, contains graphic descriptions and you guys know me like I don't get grossed out by stuff but this is so close to home for me and it is so descriptive like I can't sit there and read like so in detail rape scenes that I like that I know that have happened and like I know people who have kind of had connections with these people or the case and I'm like it's too close to home for me like I can't read it and I read like over 100 pages and I got as much detail as I needed for my essay through like this and then articles and stuff but like I can't finish this book like it's so much 
and it's kind of terrifying. So I ended up denouncing it. I ended up reading Hunting Prince Dracula. This is by Carrie Maniscalco. This is the sequel, the second book to um, Stalking Dra Jack the Ripper. And these are historical fiction, crime, mister not crime. Well, they're thriller, crime, thrillers, historical fiction. Basically our main character, the female in the story, this, since it is set so far back in the past, she actually portrays a really what, like good feminist. There's a really good feminist component to this story. And that she is interested in forensic science and all that sort of stuff. So this book just follows another case from book one, but it does, you do have to read both because it does start off with like how, how the first book affected her. And then it's about this new case that's happening right now. And this is really fun. It's a YA series. Book one, I only gave about three stars. It was okay. But book two, I listened to this on audiobook. It was so good. I loved it a lot. Yeah, I'm so excited for the next book. Honestly, this book was so much fun. I love the main characters. I love the dude. I love the romance. It's just so much fun. So I definitely suggest it. Next up here, I read Note to Self by Connor Franta. This book is Connor's auto, um, autobiography, biography, that sort of thing. It's his second book that he came out with and this is full of pictures and just stories and poetry and it's absolutely stunning inside and out. I loved it so much. I was surprised about how much I enjoyed this. I think his writing's beautiful. I think he really like he's the one, the one you like he's like the one you, person who writes a like he's the one YouTuber who like writes a book and it's not shitty <laughs> or shitty writing. Um so I really loved this. It's not because I'm a huge Connor Franta fan, which I am a fan, but I'm not like a diehard fan. I definitely was there in the O2L days a lot. Now I just watch some of his videos for enjoyment, of course, but I just love this guy's personality and the way he views the world. And I love these photos and this is really inspiring. So I definitely recommend this. I adored it. I could not put it down. It was amazing. I gave it five stars, which is really weird, but I gave it five stars. Like I had a great month. Like other than the shitty reads, I gave some good ratings. So five stars to note to self. Here I have The Smell of Other People's Houses by Bonnie Sue Hitchcock. A little bit on the back, just like the little thingy. So it says four different lives are about to become entangled. R Ruth wants to be remembered. Dora wishes she were invisible. Alice can't bring herself to leave. Hank is running away. They live in Alaska on the cold edge of America where each one must find the strength, courage, and heart to survive. So this is a no one texts me, why now? Interesting book. I listened to the audiobook of it and I ended up really liking it. I think it's very like something very special. It's a very hard hitting story. You definitely gotta pay attention. And then when it intertwines and all that, it's beautiful. So it's it's worth the read. If you're looking for a nice little short read, I definitely recommend it. Who's tweeting me? Yeah. Um, I gave this four stars. I read another review copy, so I read the beat on Ru Ruby Street. This is a historical fiction book. This book is set in 1958 and we follow our main character who's named Ruby. She is 11 years old and she gets caught apparently stealing a piece of fruit from a grocery store. So she is brought to the station and her home life is investigated and she has to go to a children's home. And it's kind of out of her. She's kind of reckless. She doesn't really know what to do and she's just trying to get back to her family sort of thing. This book was just like kind of eh for me unfortunately. I thought it would be like much better than it was. I definitely think the plot is better and I don't like I don't think it was executed as well as it could have been. The story just felt really one dimensional and like just not real. Like they were just flat to me. So the character Ruby like at parts I liked her but a lot of the time she was really annoying and made a lot of stupid decisions which is kind of normal for 11 year old. She's very naive because she is young but just some things that she says it's not addressed later. I talk about it in my good review. The writing was overall not the greatest. It was kind of messy and it was written really messy, but I couldn't stop reading it. That's the thing. Like it was interesting enough for me to finish and kind of see where this story was going and to see how it would end. And there was just entertainment value of it for me. Like it was definitely an easy read. Just there were some things in this book that I wasn't happy with. Like for example, um, Ruby is hiding in this room away and she's yelling for help because uh, she can't get out. And so a man tries to help her and he's trying to open the door and he, I think he says something to her and she goes, oh my God, he's a pervert. Like he's, a, he's a guy. It's like, literally it's, I hear the door banging like he's trying to break down the door. This makes me think he really is a pervert. What? <laughs> I don't know. So I ended up giving it two stars. 
Last and final book I read this month was War Cross by Marie Lu. I love this so much. This is a sci-fi, Julia liked sci-fi, dang. Uh, this is a sci-fi young adult novel and it's about this virtual reality, this game. It's amazing. I would highly recommend it. I'm hoping to do a review on this so I want to talk about it more there but this was incredible to me. The writing was amazing. The plot, the premise, it felt like I was there. I just fell in love with this book instantly <laughs> almost which is really weird because usually I can't get into these books but this book the writing the characters the romance everything about it was perfect to me which is really weird and it's definitely my top five of this year like how did that happen I don't know but I'm honestly in love and I was like holding this for like four hours after I finished it I was just like don't touch me so I gave this five stars I'm not over it I'm not over those were the books that I read in the month of November. Let me know your thoughts on these books. Hopefully I didn't offend anybody. Um, I did give some low ratings. Again, what can you do? I didn't like them. Sucks. Um, definitely let me know your thoughts down below. And if you want to follow me on any other social medias, I have my Instagram, Twitter, Tumblr, Pinterest, Goodreads, all linked down below in the description box. And let me know if you guys are excited for the daily videos and all that sort of stuff. I'll see you all super soon with a new video. Bye!